The light coming, the sun coming right through behind it. Remembers about, uh, reminds me about what Captain Count said that when the tree is big, mm -hmm. the roots beneath it. who are still going to grieve. We have memorial services this week for those that were sick. I pray, Lord, that we would be that we would be very in tune with your spirit and how you want us to move forward. I pray, Lord, that we would be very sensitive to your spirit, that we would be very sensitive to the things that you're speaking, the things that you're doing. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you for your strength. We wait on you for your peace. We wait on you as you mend our broken hearts and you lift us up from the ashes. You bring us up back up onto solid ground. But as you take us higher, God, we don't just want to come back to, no. to a place no. where we were before. God, we want, we want to go beyond. We That's want to right. step beyond these yes, things, Lord. Lord, and step up into kingdom business. Step up into kingdom mindedness that we were not walking in. Lord, and we want to maintain this momentum that you've given us, that your spirit has strengthened us with. Thank you, Jesus.
rugged places a plain. The glory of the Lord will be revealed and all mankind together will see it for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So, uh, which part you're thinking specifically? It, it, there's a scripture that says God is coming with us. God is on his way. God is on his way. Yeah right before the scripture that talks about him being the shepherd that comes in verse I think it's like verse 12 God is coming. Yes, the sovereign Lord is coming in power. He will rule with a powerful arm. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. Yes, your God is coming. The Sovereign Lord is coming in power. 
to rule with his powerful arm. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep of their young. Thank you, Jesus. Have you not heard? Do you not understand? Are you deaf to the words of God, the words he gave before the world began? Are you so ignorant? God sits above the circle of the earth. The people below seem like grasshoppers to him. He spreads out the heavens like a curtain and makes his tent from them. He judges the great people of the world and brings them all to nothing. He hardly gets started, barely taking root when he blows on them and they wither. The wind carries them off like chaff. To whom will you compare me? Who is my equal as the Holy One? Look up into the heavens who created all the stars. He brings them out like an army, one after another, calling each by its name. Because of his great power and incomparable strength, not a single one is missing. How can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? Have you ever heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youth will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not sink. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So there was part of the scripture that was, that was, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me this morning. And I mean, I've read this scripture. I've quoted this scripture probably hundreds of times. But I, I saw the Lord and, and we po what he's pointing out here this morning. It says they will soar high on wings like eagles. Like eagles. And I saw that. I actually saw that it wasn't us soaring ab above, which... I don't know if you know that eagles wait for a storm. They come on the edge and they wait for the storm, for the winds that lift them up above the storm and they soar high above. But I saw the Lord coming with healing in his wings and soaring. The soaring that we're doing on wings like eagles is actually riding on the mercy and the healing of God as he swoops in. Amen. As he brings his healing, as he brings his presence, as he brings his fullness. And he's lifting us up on his wings as he soars in. As he flies above these things. As he goes to the higher, higher ways of thinking. Higher ways. <clears throat> a higher viewpoint. As we were doing night watch last night. Um felt there was a point that the Lord spoke and we were crying out for holy perspective. We were crying out for God's perspective for the days ahead to move forward that, that we needed to begin to see from his, his perspective over all the things that are going on. The only way that we're going to do that is if we allow him to come up underneath us with his wings and lift us up above and strengthen us. Strengthen us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the promises that declare that you are on your way, that you are coming. Comfort those who need. You lift us. 
were already there, shepherds of the city that were there, and, uh, and as God has brought us together as the body of Christ, we were prepared we were prepared for this moment to minister to this community the body of Christ responded as one in this as community. One. Responded as, as, one. as one. As one. And I, I've just been thinking about John chapter 17 ever since this has happened. That Jesus says that you will become one as I and the Father are one. That the world will know. Then they'll know. That the world will know that you sent me. The world knows the world's eyes, the nation's eyes of Rosebird. So, Lord, we just pray that all men would be drawn to you. Yes. All men would cry out to you. That you would draw all men to yourself as you promised dual application because obviously he was lifted up on the cross but I believe that he is lifted up yes. as we come together in worship, as we come together as one. So Lord Jesus, draw all men to yourself. Amen. Draw the families of lost loved ones. Draw the families of those who have injured and those that are still in the hospital. Draw the family and friends. Draw this community. Draw Roseburg, Douglas County, the state of Oregon. God, draw our hearts back to you, Lord Jesus.
tent forever 
yes. things of God. We want yes. more and more of Him. Right. But He requires us to give more out of us. The Holy Spirit, as that song says, Holy Spirit come in us, and they go out of us. So, like, you know, God is speaking to the church today, right. not just to the people in right. the community that are lost. Yeah. Yeah. God's going to hold us accountable on. for what we are not doing right, in right, His name for right. people that we are not reaching for the prayers that we have not gone on. Every church and every person should have a war room. We Amen. A war room. On, Evil has come into this place, yes. but we reject Him, yes. we fight Him, we cast Him out in the name of Jesus, yeah. through the power of the blood of Jesus, and we claim victory through the blood of Jesus. Yes. 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 I know the Holy Spirit's going to move in a way if we have great expectations we're going to see God move in a way in our life and in our churches in this community that he never would ever be able to do if this poor news had not come to us. And so I'm just looking forward to what God wants to do in me, God, what you want to do. Purify me, God. Cleanse me, God. Help me to be an instrument of your kingdom to your people, so it's been our experience that the people in the church are not wicked people. They're just wounded. They just haven't been healed yet. So we're just asking, Lord, that you would come to your bride and heal your bride. Those places where lies come and camp, the lies of the enemy come and camp and tell us that we're insignificant, we don't have a purpose, and, and we're not loved like other people are loved, and we don't have the giftings that other people have. So, Lord, that's all just a crock. That's just a lie. So we just expose the lies for what they are. We're just asking, Lord, that you come in and heal your church and bring them into their significance, Lord, and have them walk in their purpose and their anointing and their authority. Hallelujah. just wanted to confirm uh, a word that our sister said. So I'm, my name is Jim Moore. I'm from the Salem House of Prayer. I've met you here. But Thursday night, I had a dream. And the dream I was looking for, standing on top of what was called the Mountain of Oregon. And there were a whole bunch of believers from all over the state who were up on top of the Mountain of Oregon. And everybody had gifts in their hands. They all had gifts in their hands. And there was not a single believer that did not have gifts in their hands. And they were all walking around, and the phrase, the pinnacle of Oregon, kept coming. Like we were at a pivotal point. Like the state was at a pivotal point. And uh, everyone was sort of milling around, wondering what they were supposed to do next. And then suddenly a voice came over the loudspeaker. And the voice was the voice of the Holy Spirit. And the voice said, it's time. It's very simple. It's that first time. Yeah. And everybody felt this kind of this, this awakening and this alarm in their spirit. Not fearful, but just like, okay. And everyone got very serious. And they all started moving down the mountain to find a place to use their gifts. Amen. So I just want to pray an apparent of agreement that God will, yes. will heal us, do whatever it takes. Heal us, Lord. And I think we've been waiting a long time. Yes, we have. Uh, to just do something. Saved, and healed. now Lord, it's the Holy Spirit saying now is the time. So, Amen. Father, we say yes. Yes, yes. yes. Holy Spirit, we agree with your assessment. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus, we say, Lord, help us move down the mountain now. Yes, Lord. We're at a pivotal point, Lord. We've heard the sound. We've heard the alarm of your Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. And we say yes, God. Amen. Jesus, we say no more will we carry around our gifts in our hands without using them. Yes. The Lord, we ask you just to begin to empower us yes. by faith yes. and love. Amen. The faith that works by love. Amen. Lord, yes, just Lord. like people have been doing in this city, just simple acts of love to demonstrate, Lord, who you are. I pray let that continue. Yes. Let it now spread throughout the state of Oregon. Amen. Lord, we are at a pivotal point. We pray let it now consume our hearts yes. that we yes. use the gifts that you've given us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus' name. We agree.
and heart abandoned in all God, I pray that you would give us transformed minds, that we would, we would, in obedience, replace thoughts that do not line up with who you are, or with your word, or with your spirit, Lord, and we would begin to speak your truth, and renew our mind, and present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to you, God. Not just part of a sacrifice, but a complete sacrifice, Lord. Not just a leg, not just an arm, not just a Sunday, or not just a Wednesday, but all I am is yours. For your purpose, for your will, for your kingdom, for your good, God, for your glory, Lord.
You declare what Isaiah said. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Because he's looking for people to send. He's looking for people to use. He's looking for those that are willing to surrender, that are willing to lay down. So we say, God, here we are. Send us out. Send us out. making yourself available. Yeah. Amen. It's really all it takes is Thank making you, yourself available. Thank you. Thank you. Not allowing yeah. Not allowing your schedule to just be filled up yeah. with just busyness and things. But consciously and fully aware to be choosing to say, God, in this moment, right now, my mind is fixed on me and I heal. Lord, we declare as we do this, as your church moves into this, as you continue to minister to this community, to this society, to this state, and to this nation. Lord, as the as the world is praying for Roseburg to come, as there are prayers coming in, flooding in, Lord, that your angels are riding upon, as you're sending it into our area, Lord, you're bringing your light into the darkness and we are people of the light and we want to declare your light and your ways and your love and your grace over all those things that have been broken and lost out of all those things that are filled with shame we're crying out for your light to come we're crying out for your spirit to come in fullness in our area to move in your people Lord. let your light come let it come through us.
sending your son, Father, to die in our place, to be broken by your wounds, we are healed. Yes. By your death, we are saved. By your blood, we are cleansed. We just declare all of those things to get today as we remember what you did for us. So let's take the body of Christ. Thank you. Thank you for your, your blood poured out. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, the perfect lamb. The perfect lamb. Once for all. Once for all. Poured out. Thank you for your cleansing blood. I have this 
are Bella's handler? A dad? You are Bella's handler. Uh, actually, I'm her staff. Oh.
first tale as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still into that love.
shine in the darkness. Above all things, Lord, your ways will prevail. For what the enemy meant for harm and what the enemy meant for evil and what the enemy thought he was accomplishing, Lord, you are turning around. Lord, you are shifting the scales. You are waiting in your glory, Lord. You are tipping the scales, Lord, in your favor. You're tipping the scales in your favor, Lord. You're bringing your glory, Lord, through the pain. You're bringing your love and your comfort, God. And you're exalting those things above the darkness and above the pain, above the loss, above the tragedy, Lord. And you're coming in with your healing wings, Lord. And you're helping us to soar above the storm. Continue to hold us, God. Continue to hold us over. Thank you, everyone, who participated in uh, in the tent and uh, in worship and prayer. And uh, as we continue to go forth, there's going to be more meetings. There's going to be more prayer meetings. There's going to be more things that we can do to support our community. And I encourage you to get involved in some of those uh, as much as you can. As we see, God is God's just going to start things. Things are going to get started um, because He's a Creator, yeah. so He's going to start things, and, and His people uh, need to be responding to those things that He's doing. So, thank you, thank you. Anybody else have a closing word or a prayer? Yeah. yeah, come on, Jeremy. This is really good. So Jeremy was speaking earlier about us moving and drawing closer to God and being. And in him and and the Lord has given me this word probably for about two years and and it's about revival because we hear the word revival and a lot of us well at least me um, outside of the context that I'm going to share we think of a lot of people uh, like a gathering and and people being in uh, together 
at church that just doesn't happen once a week, but it's happening all the time. But that revival is actually an individual thing. Amen. And then we can experience Amen. corporate revival only at the onset of everybody's individual revival. Amen. And word. there's a Amen. here's a word that, that I just love. I love this. This is Psalm 119. It says, turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. And that's yes. the New King James. The, the King James says, turn my eye from beholding vanity and quicken thou me in thy way. And the, the comparison here is that the psalmist is saying, he's actually making, he's telling God. He's not saying help. He's turn my eyes from beholding or looking at not evil things. These are worthless things. These are things that don't produce anything of value in this particular case. So salvation uh, comes at the onset of him turning us from wickedness. But for us to be living in righteousness and in revival, to revive, to be revived means that you were previously in dead things. He wants to keep, he wants to get us out of dead things, not evil things. I mean, we already did that, but dead things. And so the um, the word vanity, like wh when I did a big study on this, anybody that's heard of a, of a book called The Pilgrim's Progress, yeah. uh, John Bunyan wrote that. Yeah. The the individuals had to go through a city called Vanity, but I was just thinking about you know how hard it would be not to stay there. You kind of you're going through Vanity and everybody you know they're just talking about a city. And when John Bunyan in like the 17 or 1600s when he wrote this, everything he's talking about is just normal. It's a city where they're doing trade. They're just trading normal things. And people can get stuck there on the way to the celestial city. So the Lord, I just feel like this is probably, I'm probably preaching to most of the choir here. But as we're, as we're living this out, in this moment that the Lord's clearly giving us an opportunity, it's a window of opportunity that we can say yes to, as, as we draw near to God, we can help those individuals that maybe don't know the next step. What do I do, you know? And, and drawing close to God is just separating us from dead dead things and that that's a hard that's hard it's easy to stay away from evil things after you've been saved yes, but the next thing the enemy does, does is he says well if i can't get him into sin i'll just get him in this normal life yeah. i'll just occupy him or her in normal life and then you're going to think that a 401k is the thing that you're supposed to have and, and you know and then you're just the kingdoms over here you're not evil you're not dying but you're anyway so that that's just a word so that's the, so that's in the in the uh Farmer sowing seed, that's the cares of the world. Yeah. Right. Where they choke where it gets choked out of us. Absolutely. For God. So I want to pray. Uh, I want to pray on this. So Father God, we come to you as your people, Father. Give us the courage and boldness and and to understand that you have all of our needs met. Yes. That we don't need to seek out normal life to meet our and sustain our needs that you're going to do that, Father God. <laughs> Show us areas in our life that are keeping us from the next level of knowing you. Father God, bring this community together. I believe that this is an opportunity for us to be your church. Father God, the eyes of the world are on us. Father God, we want to be a city on a hill yes. that cannot be hidden. Yeah. Father God, show yeah. the world your light and we give you permission to, to get in our lives and to use us to expose who you are to the world around us. In Jesus' name, we say amen. 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 Good word. Good word. Yes. Amen. All right. Okay. What's it? So the, the last song that we sang, Holy Spirit wrote the morning of... Um, or the morning after um, the shootings and it just poured out from heaven about his faithfulness and his goodness he was just exalting and saying listen this is who I am above all these things and, uh, <clears throat> actually the night of uh, he was just in wanting to bring comfort and, and I want to declare this because this week is going to be all about comforting those that are yeah. grieving yeah. as they memorialize and and so i felt um this song um the lord actually wrote uh the night thursday night and um it's all about 
a cry of those that are needing comfort, that are needing to be held, that are wanting answers. For all of us who are standing in the gap, praying and worshiping, telling the storm that heaven was coming. So I just want to proclaim this song of comfort. Here and now, needing comfort to abound, I cry out, calling heaven to come down. You take my hand and tell me it will be okay. Wash away the brokenness of yesterday. Here and now, I feel your loving arms surround, chasing out all the fear that wants to try. Take my hand and tell me it will be okay. Wash away the brokenness of yesterday. You take my hand and tell me it will be okay. Draw me near, speak the words I need to hear, while I'm trusting you, the whole fight here. Draw me near, speak the words I need to hear, while I'm trusting you, the whole Every tear, Lord, draw me near. I speak the words I need to hear. While I'm trusting you, will hold my tears. What's raging? I don't know how, but you will mend my heart that's breaking. You take my hand and tell me it will be okay. Wash away the brokenness of yesterday. You take my hand and tell me. I don't know how, but you will mend these hearts that are breaking. You take their hands and tell them it will be okay. You wash away the brokenness of yesterday. God, you take
says that you come close to the broken heart. You draw near to them. We weep with those who weep today. Our hearts break for the things that break your heart. And this is something that breaks your heart. We will continue to stand and exalt your ways high above anything of the enemy. We will continue to stand to believe, God, that you are lifting us up, moving us from glory to glory, and that you're he you've heard our prayers and that you are sending your word and healing us, God, that you have heard our prayers and you're coming in your manifested fullness and glory, Lord, to establish your kingdom right here in Roseburg, right here in Douglas County, right here in Oregon, to become a beacon of light for the entire world affecting kings and nations. We declare these things as your children, adopted, brought into you, sharing the same inheritance as your son. And we call them that inheritance of souls of salvation, Lord. As we move forward today, moving into salvation. Lily, amen. Yeah. 